This here is another viewer's broken gaming PC, but it's not broken in the traditional sense. Well, I suppose it could be. It, it's possible something could be broken outright, but the main issue with this is that it does power on, it does post, but it does not load into Windows, which pretty much means this thing's just as uh, valuable as a box of rocks. We're gonna try to fix it up. I think it has to do with either his storage drive or a setting in the BIOS. I'm expecting this to be a pretty quick fix, but you never know, so we'll see what happens. Are you ready? Stay with me. Introducing Kyoxia's new XG8 series NVMe SSDs featuring 5th generation Bix Flash 3D TLC memory and PCIe 4.0 compatibility. With capacities up to 4 terabytes and support for optional security features like TCG Pyrite and Opal, Kyoxia drives are perfect for your next desktop, server, or workstation. Sequential reads and writes reach up to 7,000 and 5,800 megabytes per second respectively and are suited for ultra-fast program, OS, and VM load times, bundled with peace of mind warranties and and at affordable price points. Kyoxia's comprehensive PCIe 4 SSD portfolio continues to grow with products offered for a wide range of applications. Check them out, including their new XG8 drives by clicking the link below. So, like I said, this rig is, uh, well, it's pretty clean looking. It looks like it was put together well, and it is quite beefy as well. A Radon RX 6700 XT in here, obviously an AM4 CPU of some sort, maybe Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, four DDR4 DIMMs, and questionably enough, a fan placed kind of sketchily on the basement facing downward. I just checked the power supply fan is also pulling air down. It's not uh, flipped upside down to where it's pulling in air from the bottom. So you have two fans essentially doing the exact same thing, pressed right up against each other, competing for air with the graphics car, which is trying to pull air in the other direction and out the rear and sides. Um, I don't know about this. I, I might advise him remove this and just he'll be okay without it. I think the power supply will be fine. Uh, but everything else looks decent. Again, with that one exception, that being the fact that he can't get into Windows. And if he can't get into Windows, he can't use his rig. So that's what we're gonna try to figure out here. Now, for those who are new here, this playlist is called Fix or Flop. In it, we attempt to fix, attempt. That's the key word there, attempt, okay? Some folks think like I'm guaranteeing fixes and that's not the case. That's literally why we call it fix or flop. Use, use your noggins, come on. Yeah, some, of, some of the comments, I just, I just don't get the criticism. Anyway, uh, we attempt to fix viewer systems for free. We charge nothing for the service. I can monetize these videos. That's how I make my money. I'm obviously not doing this as like a charity. I'm not doing it out of the kindness of my heart. In one sense of the word, I kind of am, but at the same time, I'm also getting paid to do this. So it's not like I'm all that nice a guy. Anyway, uh, the, you know, the least I could do for allowing you to, you know, or for allowing me to make videos around your your builds is attempt to fix them. So if you do live in or around Orlando, Florida, this local central Florida area, uh, and you have a uh, system that maybe doesn't power on or it powers on but doesn't post, something along those lines, probably a hardware related issue, I would love a chance to fix it. And you can enter your rig to possibly be featured on the channel via the submission link below. First thing we need to do is power the system on and uh, hopefully we'll see what the viewer says we should see. So it does turn on. It's emitting a very interesting smell. And there's our post. And it's loading. This looks like it's working. Uh-oh. Repairing automatic repair. So it goes straight into repairing automatic repair. It looked like for a second there, and I'll, I'll get a close up here of the screen, uh, that the system was going to load into Windows. I mean, you had the little spinny wheels at the bottom. That's what you see right before loading in. But at this point, it looks like the system just continues to reset itself. Once it tries loading into that boot volume, it just craps its pants and starts power cycling, which is odd but I, I think this has a lot to do with the drive itself. I'm gonna hop into the BIOS real quick. He said that he reset his BIOS settings multiple times. So I don't expect there's anything in there that's keeping the boot volume from being loaded into, but we should double check just to be safe. And for those wondering, debug LEDs uh, all flash through appropriately. You can see the green boot LED there. So that means all the primary system checks have passed. Now we are able to make it into the BIOS, so that's a good thing. And uh, let's see, boot here, boot option one. So this is the Gigabyte M.2. I believe uh, this is the top one, 
that uh, it's a Gen 4 drive that he's loaded Windows onto from what he's told me. And so uh, that's good news. At least the drive is detected in the BIOS. It doesn't look like anything else about this UEFI is uh, off. Everything seems normal, settings seem legit. So, I mean, the fact that it's detecting the drive and trying to boot into it, I don't think there's anything else we can do here in the BIOS to get around whatever's corrupt. This is the Gigabyte drive right here with the copper heatsink over it. It looks like it's connected to the correct M.2 slot closest to the CPU to utilize CPU lanes. And right now I'm wondering if I should just swap the drive out completely to see if the system posts. I mean, right now, the fact that we're in the BIOS tells me that all of the other primary components are okay. Uh, you're not utilizing a boot drive, uh, any storage drive at all to get into the BIOS, you're using the onboard BIOS chip. Uh, and so that's why everything seems okay now, why we can navigate through the panels, no problem. There is no freezing, but the moment it tries to access the storage drive, the boot drive in particular, uh, that's when things completely go out of whack. So uh, I have, an M.2 with an AMD OS already preloaded. Uh, well, it's Windows, but it, it's uh, Windows configured for, for AMD systems, uh, AMD drivers. And uh, I'm gonna swap that in here just to ensure that we can boot into it. And I've already asked the viewer if anything sensitive is on this drive. He said, no, just games, nothing important. Uh, we'll probably end up, actually, I think most of his games aren't even on there. He's got a few other storage drives that have his games on it. So just the OS, what we might need to do is just reinstall Windows. It might be a corrupt OS. If at that point we still run into issues trying to install it or trying to access it after the fact, then the drive is probably cooked. Uh, and swapping it out will be the easiest way to get around this. Luckily, these M.2s are super easy to remove and install. Wow, this thing is beefy. It is literally solid copper, it feels like. Holy cow, I love that. And uh, we'll get this one in there. I'm not even gonna lock it down with a screw. As long as it's making contact in the uh, socket itself, we'll be okay. So we'll just slip it in, leave it there. Oh. Okay, it's a little loose. I'll, I'll tighten it down. Hmm, okay. Uh, we're still locking up here in about the same spot too. Uh, th this is actually pretty useful info here. It tells me where I need to shift my focus. So you can see the BIOS recognizes my new M.2 I inserted and it sees that there's a boot volume there. It just can't get anywhere past that. I think it has to do with the slot that it's in. First thing I wanna do is try specifically denoting gen speeds for each of these primary connected devices. So gen four for the graphics card, it's an RX 6700 XT. Uh, and then we're also going to try, let me make sure, is this CPU, does CPU support gen? Yeah, so it's a 5900X. So it does support gen four natively. Uh, we'll go back into onboard devices. So gen four there, and then the M.2 slot one which is where his boot drive is. I'm gonna select Gen 3 for this because the M.2 I just connected is Gen 3, but his is Gen 4. Uh, we'll see if this fixes it, though I doubt it. We're just trying to run through things that uh, only take a few seconds to change. Ooh, uh, okay. It, it really didn't like that. Why, why on earth? I don't know what we're doing wrong here. Why are we getting blue screens for these drives? I know that my drive works. I've used it in several AMD systems in the past. So this is um, this is looking like an issue with another uh, another piece of hardware. Maybe it's just still another BIOS setting. Even even if we clear the BIOS, we still get this issue if we reset the CMOS. So I don't know what's going on. You know, it's weird because we get different blue screens of death every single time I try to fire this rig up. It's not even the same exception or the same error over and over. And at this point, I've disconnected everything non-vital in the rig, including all of the additional storage drives. There were four SATA drives connected and an additional M.2 at the bottom. Uh, so all we have is my M.2 here and it just keeps trying to kick itself into the recovery environment. And eventually it even gives up on that. I don't know what my camera is doing with autofocus, but uh, at this point I am at a loss. I'm very confused as to why this is happening with even known working drives. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe a motherboard issue, maybe a CPU issue since this drive is connected to the CPU lanes. Let's try moving my drive down to uh, the lower M.2 slot. I think that runs through the chipset. A few moments later. So I've tried every which configuration, multiple drives in different slots, every possible NVMe M.2 BIOS setting 
you can imagine, tried CSM support, and everything failed. But I think we may be looking in the wrong place. I don't know for sure, and I can't test this because the system doesn't stay on long enough to, to actually work. I don't know for sure. This is kind of a shot in the dark, but at this point I'm ready to look past the drives entirely and focus on the motherboard and CPU. So if you notice right now, CPU package temps just idling in the BIOS are almost 60 degrees Celsius. That's not normal. And this, mind you, is at stock settings. We don't have any extra voltage pumping through, multipliers all on auto, everything is vanilla. Granted, some motherboards have been known to pump more voltage than they need through a chip, and that, of course, will raise the temperature, but this is certainly higher than it should be stock, and I think what's happening, um, because this is idle. Again, we're, we're, not, we're under no load here. It's just chilling in the BIOS. When it tries to load into Windows, of course that CP is working to you know, open some programs and things to get things going. I think this temperature just shoots way too high up and it locks the system up. That's a shot in the dark guess, but um, it, it could explain why things look to be working at first and then they just lock up, they just totally give out. So maybe we were looking in the wrong place altogether. For example, like IRQL not less or equal to zero, like that's not, you know, that that's not a, that's not a normal thing you should see if your M.2 drive is, is cooking. So I it just, it's all around very, very confusing. I'm gonna check to see if this cooler's mounted correctly and maybe we'll just replace this with a, you know, like a stock Wraith Stealth air cooler just to, just to make sure we, don't, we aren't having serious temperature issues. Now it does look like thermal paste was spread appropriately on the cold plate. There was enough of it uh, over the CPU. So uh, the last thing, yeah, to, to do here is bypass the cooler altogether. If this is in fact a temp issue, maybe there's a clog in here. Uh, the pump feels like it's working. I can feel fluid churning, but it is very weak. So let's put an air cooler on the chip and see if we can get past the uh, Windows loading screen. Oof, and uh, yeah, with the stock cooler on, even toaster, I know you're not technically supposed to run the stock cooler with a 5900X, but uh, this is excessive. This, I mean, at idle, we're at 78 degrees package temps. Some, something is very wrong here. It has literally been, what, two hours of just, uh, just, just straight grind here, <laughs> trying to make this work. I am, I'm struggling to figure out what it is because all it does essentially is either try to boot into automatic repair and freeze or do what you're seeing right now and just blue screen. So, you know, I, and look, that attempted to write to read only memory. I, it, every single time it blue screens, it's a different prompt. It's, it's not consistent enough for me to diagnose. And that's kind of the problem here. I'm just shooting in the dark. I think, uh, I think what I'm gonna do is either swap his motherboard out or his CPU. I'll probably swap his CPU out first just because it's the easier thing to do, but I think there might be some sort of controller here that's just gone whack and it's keeping us from, from really doing anything with Windows. It just, it just keeps looping into automatic repair or freezing at some load screen and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm at a dead end here. Let's see what it does this time. So that was black screen. Now it looks like it's loading into Windows and it's probably gonna, probably gonna blue screen here. If I had to guess. Mm, nope, automatic repair this time. And it's gonna try getting into the recovery environment. It's not gonna happen. And the cycle repeats over and over and over. It's very frustrating. I'm very confused. I think, yeah, see when it does this, when it just shows the logo and nothing else, that means it's just gonna sit there for like 10 minutes. It won't do anything. Um, so yeah, let's try swapping out the CPU first. I've got my own 5950X here. I'm gonna swap this straight in and not change anything else and see if it fires up. I would be a bit surprised, but then again, we've seen weirder stuff here in this playlist. And with that CPU in there, check it out. It's actually, it's actually diagnosing. We're in the recovery environment. So I think what we can do now is put his original drive back in the system. So the only thing at that point that's changed is the CPU. We've upgraded him basically from a 5900X to a 5950X. And I think we'll be able to get into Windows at this point. For whatever reason, his CPU, his 5900X was keeping us from, yeah, it was keeping us from Windows. It would just throw a bunch of errors and blue screens when it tried to load into the boot volume, but uh, 
Uh, this 5950X works fine. I know it does. I've used it in other builds. I think we're I think we're in the clear here. Well, yeah, that did it. <laughs> the CPU. Uh, who who would have thought, right? I can't tell you the number of times I said that, but. Uh, I was so focused on the drive itself because we've run into dead drives before, just uh, corrupt operating systems could be either of those things, but it wasn't. In this case, it was the CPU itself, and I started getting suspicious about the CPU. This is, uh, yeah, we need to fix the fan curves a bit. I started getting suspicious about the CPU around the time we started noticing a bunch of different blue screen of death error codes. Usually, if it's a storage drive issue or corrupt uh, volume, you'll see the same the same blue screen uh, error over and over. But here we were seeing to like completely off the wall, different errors every single time it seemed like we tried to boot into the OS. Uh, and a few of those were specific to the CPU, uh, IQRL or IR RRLQ, IRQL, not less or equal to zero. Like that one there is usually for the CPU. Uh, so that's what got me focusing on the platform. And uh, well, the motherboard was just the more difficult of the two to swap out. So that's why I swapped the CPU first and that ended up fixing the problem. So as of now, his 5900X is out of his rig and in it, uh, in its place is a 5950X. So a bit of an upgrade there and uh, well, hey, his system works again, right? So there's that. There are a lot of reasons why a CPU could just decide to kick the can. Old age, just uh, just from running for as long as it has. Maybe it's been running in a very hot environment. This is a newer chip, only came out a few years ago. So it, it's not old uh, by, I would say, just traditional standards. You'd say this is a pretty modern CPU. And it's unlikely that this just died on its own. There's probably something else that caused this. Maybe something was not wired correctly and then powered on and that immediately shorted the chip out. Uh, although there should be protections in place if you were in the middle of a lightning storm or whatever, there's still the off chance that something like this kicks the can instead. It's just odd that the symptoms were as, as specific as they were. If you had a fully dead chip, you shouldn't get a post at all. The fact that we got a post, the BIOS detected the CPU, uh, we could change voltages, we could change frequencies. I tried all of that. I tried lowering everything across the board just in case there were some tolerance issues. Still nothing out of this when we tried to load into Windows. So it's, it's just a very odd set of circumstances. I'm going to save this chip and run some tests in the future on it just to fully wrap my head around what's going on here. It's possible this might not be totally cooked. Uh, it might be might be salvageable, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But uh, I, I wanna keep this video just to the PC at large, getting him back up and running. We'll, we'll follow up with this in a later video. Uh, but for now, it's, um, I'm glad the, the system's working again. Swapping this out was a very quick fix for him and I get a little upgrade in it as well. To that end, the viewer, just let him know his system's back up and running, wants to pick this up like ASAP. So we're gonna uh, put the left panel back on and uh, I'll include that extra fan we took out so he can do whatever he wants with that. Uh, and uh, we'll drop this back off for him. So uh, good news there. I'll just have to wrap the video up pretty quickly. Again, if you have a broken system and you live in or around Orlando, Florida, and you want a chance to have it fixed for free here on the channel, submit a link. It's, uh, well, you don't have to make a link yourself, but click the link in the description and uh, that'll take you to a form you can fill out, include photos, include specs, and a detailed description of what is wrong, and we just might get to you. I'll do my best, folks. There's a lot of stuff that uh, we really can't address. Um, a lot of folks complaining about random blue screens and things. If you have those issues, don't even bother. But um, if it looks like a hardware issue, you put together a system and it's powering on but not posting, you don't get a picture to your monitor or it's outright not powering on at all, those are the things we wanna check out because we can usually diagnose those fairly quickly. And uh, just the hardware, hardware related stuff's a bit prettier in all honesty uh, to film. I don't wanna just film a screen cap the entire time running through a registry to try to get a system to stop randomly blue screening, which is not even in itself very repeatable if it's random uh, and I can't replicate it quickly enough, it's just gonna take up far too much time in my day. So um, just to be a bit transparent with you there, why we choose what we choose in the, uh, in the form. So thanks so much for watching. Consider giving this one a thumbs up, leaving a comment down below and subscribing if you haven't already. My name is Greg. Thanks for fixing this thing with me.